please be seated. Good morning and welcome to the State of Georgia's 2021 Veterans Day Proclamation signing. Thank you for joining us as we honor, recognize, and celebrate the bravery and courage of all Georgians who have served our nation's military forces. At this time, if you're able, please stand for the presentation of colors by the Georgia National Card Color Guard, the singing of our national anthem by Ms. Shelley Williams, and the Pledge of Allegiance led by GDVS Assistant Commissioner Mark Bannister. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail as the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight over rampers we were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave through the night that a flag was still there oh say does that star spangled Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, Major Sharana Will <coughs> Watson, chaplain of the Georgia Army National Guard, will offer the invocation. Good morning. Let us pray. Scripture tells us that we should give honor where honor is due. Today, we gather to give honor to those who have made ultimate sacrifices sacrifices that are seen and unseen, families that have sacrificed birthdays, days apart, holidays, precious memories, but they've done that because they are one of our greatest servants. Today, we want to say thank you to those who are our greatest servants. They serve not only their state at times, but they serve their country, both at home and abroad. Thank you may not be enough, but today we say thank you for those who have served and served well. All these things we offer to you now, amen. Please be seated. Thank you, Chaplain Watson. The state of Georgia first held its public recognition of veterans in 1954 
when Armistice Day became Veterans Day. As we continue this tradition and celebrate the service of Georgia veterans, their dedication to preserving the ideals of freedom, justice, and liberties for all is commendable. They deserve our recognition and appreciation not just today, but every day. Today, we are here to salute you and the spirit of all American service members. We are here to salute the spirit of those who have come before us and those who will follow in this great tradition of selfless service. Thank you, Georgia veterans. Interim Commissioner of Veteran Service, Sean Hanley, is here today and will welcome our guests and speak about the annual observation of Veterans Day. Thank you, everybody. I'm um, a little disappointed I didn't see more Marines in the crowd, but you know, I, I, I noticed uh, the shiny shoes. So that's one way to find them. So uh, thank you, everybody. Um, and thank you, Assistant Commissioner. And uh, welcome, everybody, to this annual celebration of Georgia veterans. Uh, military service demands a special kind of sacrifice from all of those across America, especially our veterans who have donned the uniform of our country. But it also brings its own special kind of reward. Every man and woman who answers the call of duty is part of a long, unbroken chain of achievement, courage, and valor. Today we celebrate their service and remember that we must never, ever take the American veteran for granted. I want to especially thank and welcome Governor and First Lady Kemp, our visiting, dig visiting dignitaries, our state representatives, state senators, and all the veterans and the veteran service organizations represented today. Since the very first Veterans Day ceremony, Georgia's governor has issued a Veterans Day proclamation. Today, we are grateful to have our governor sign this proclamation for 2021. But I also have the distinct honor of introducing one of the better advocates for veterans in the state of Georgia. Speaker Ralston has served Georgians since 1992 when he was elected to the state senate. He was later elected to the House of Representatives in 2002, and he has held the speakership since 2010. A strong, positive force for change in his many public years of service. His vision has helped guide several legislative accomplishments. But as a Marine, I got to say thank you. You've been a great servant for the veterans all across Georgia. Speaker David Ralston. Thank you very much, Sean, and good morning. I am honored to be here on this special occasion as Speaker of the Georgia House of Representatives to add my thanks to the men and women of our armed forces for their service and sacrifice. America has emerged as the greatest and freest nation the world has ever known. We have done so because we are committed to the highest ideals of liberty, justice, and equality. But beyond our philosophy, we have also become the world's beacon of freedom because of the shield provided by our armed forces. They guard our shores and protect our homeland. They defend our way of life in distant lands and protect the oppressed from tyrants and dictators. America is the land of the free and the home of the brave. For that, we thank the soldier, sailor, airman, marine, and coast guardsman. 
Whether in war or peace throughout all our history, American women and men have proudly put on the uniform and answered duty's call. Their sacrifices have been great. As has been said, all gave some, some gave all. So on this Veterans Day, let us rededicate ourselves to honoring their service and ensuring that those who wear the uniform are treated with the respect and dignity they deserve. It is now my privilege to introduce our next speaker, and I can tell you that throughout his tenure in office, he has demonstrated his commitment to those who answer the call to serve. He has been a great partner working with the Georgia General Assembly to keep Georgia a military and veteran-friendly state. Please help me join in welcoming Georgia's 83rd Governor, Brian Kemp. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Good morning. Thank you, Speaker Ralston, for that kind introduction. I have always marveled at how much Speaker Ralston says with so few words, and that was very appropriate today, and I certainly appreciate your steadfast support and the houses of, of our veterans. I was sitting there uh, thinking, obviously sitting next to our great First Lady, Marty Kemp, and I was thinking, you know, if we'd have ended this program after the national anthem and the prayer, it still would have been pretty good. So thank you all for that. But Marty and I are great supporters of our veterans, and we're just honored to be here today with so many of our, our friends and those that are serving and supporting veterans in this state. Obviously, General Tom Cardin and members of the Georgia National Guard and the Georgia Army National Guard, the Georgia Department of Veterans Services Interim Commissioner Sean Hanley and his team. And Sean, I just appreciate the job that you and your team have been doing in the, the last several weeks and months. And certainly always good to see my old colleague and friend from the State Senate, Ed Harbison, who has been a great supporter of this service over the years uh, for a very long time. And I certainly appreciate you, Leader Dugan, as present as is he always, and a fine veteran himself and many other members of the House and Senate. And I just appreciate you all, especially in these busy times of a special session, for taking the time to come and support our active duty members and our veterans that are being honored today, and uh, we're honored to be with you. Uh, also honored to be with our newest public service commissioner, Fitz Johnson, who is also a fine veteran in his own right, as well as our insurance and fire safety commissioner, General John King, who has served our state so well, not only in the insurance commissioner's offices, but also in his, George, or in his National Guard duty that literally has taken him around the country in service during the battle against COVID-19. And lastly, I just wanted to acknowledge and thank uh, the so many veteran organizations and friends that are supportive of these great people, past and present, for being with us today. We are grateful and do not thank you enough for what you're doing to support the men and women in uniform and those that have served before. And as Speaker Ralston so greatly alluded to, we gather today to celebrate patriotism and pride in America by honoring all the men and women, past and present, who have served our country in the United States Armed Forces. And today I'd like to encourage all Georgians to take a few moments out of their day to simply thank a veteran. But I also want to ask everyone here today and at home to join me in using today as an important reminder of the principles of our veterans that our veterans represent and the values and freedoms that so many have served to protect and defend. I hope that today can serve as a reflection on our Constitution, the country that we are all blessed to live in and the ability to pursue the American dream. America, as Speaker Ralston said, is the greatest civilization in history, a republic built upon the belief that government exists to safeguard all our God-given liberties. We have freedom of speech, freedom to practice the religion of our choice, the freedom to raise our families how we deem fit, 
and the freedom to protect ourselves and our loved ones. With these rights come a solemn responsibility, and that is to remember and to be grateful that someone in a uniform sacrificed something for all of us. The truth is threats against our country will always exist, both domestic and abroad. And so as we gather today, we must not forget what Ronald Reagan said. Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it on to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same. Or one day we will spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it was once like to live in the United States of America where men were free. Today we honor every man and woman who has ever worn the uniform of our country. And best to honor you, we recommit ourselves to valuing and upholding the freedoms you have protected. May God watch over and protect our troops who are in arms way. Marty, the girls, and I continue to pray for you and your families. God bless America. May God continue to bless the great state of Georgia. With that, I'll turn it over to Carrie Dyer with the Georgia Department of Veterans Services, who will read our official Veterans Day proclamation. Carrie. by the governor of the state of Georgia, a proclamation for Veterans Day. Whereas the citizens of Georgia and the United States of America live in freedom because of the contributions and personal sacrifices made by those who have served and by those currently serving in the armed forces. And whereas Georgia has always provided its best and brightest sons and daughters to serve bravely in America's armed forces. We remember with somber and grateful hearts to those men and women who have served in the military with distinction and valor as soldiers, Marines, sailors, airmen, Coast Guardsmen, and guardians. And whereas we offer our sincere prayers for those who continue to defend the ideas of liberty and justice on which our nation was founded. And whereas we endeavor to honor the contributions and sacrifices of millions of Georgians who have over the centuries served in the military and the tens of thousands currently serving at home and abroad. And whereas we owe an unrepayable debt to the more than 700,000 veterans who call Georgia home. If it not for their strong desire to protect and defend our way of life, our nation would not be safe, free, and just. And whereas we are proud to recognize the veterans of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. They are deserving of our praise and their sacrifices serve as a constant reminder that freedom is not free. And whereas we extend the appreciation of our citizens to those who wear the uniforms of the United States Armed Forces and serve our nation to preserve freedom and liberty. And whereas on Veterans Day, the state of Georgia encourages all citizens to join in recognizing and appreciating the sacrifices and contributions of our veterans who fought for peace and defended democracy in our land and abroad now. Therefore, I, Brian Kemp, Governor of the State of Georgia, do hereby proclaim November 11th, 2021 as Veterans Day in Georgia. In the witness thereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the Executive Department to be affixed this 8th day of November in the year of our Lord, 2021. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Uh, thank you, Governor Kemp, and thank you, Mr. Dyer. Um, it is now my pleasure to welcome Georgia's Adjutant General, Tom Cardin, to speak with us today. First enlisting in the Georgia Army National Guard in 1986, later commissioned as a second lieutenant in 1989. 
But trust me, the part I love the best is you were an enlisted man. General Cardin has a prolific career of service to our country, one of the finer Americans we'll ever meet. His service and leadership in many key positions in the Army and in the Georgia Army National Guard has helped shape the lives of many servicemen, both home and abroad. Lady and gentlemen, Adjutant General Tom Cardin. Thank you very much, Commissioner. All of our previously recognized distinguished guests, good morning. Governor and Mrs. Kemp, Georgia Department of Veterans Affairs, I can't thank you enough uh, for making this event possible today. I mean, it truly fires me up after 34 and a half years in uniform. I, I just couldn't be more humbled and honored to be in the, in the company of, of heroes today. And, and you know, at a time in, in our nation when leadership has never been more important, we are truly blessed to have a governor and a first lady that takes care of our veterans, not just today, not just on Memorial Day, not just on the 4th of July, but every day in the, in the state of Georgia. So thank you, sir. Thank you, First Lady, for everything that you all do for everybody that's ever worn a uniform that's a resident of, of this state. So all veterans are special, and no veteran service is any more important or less important than another. But I will have to ask if you're able, our Vietnam veterans, to stand and be recognized. You didn't get the welcome home that you deserve, so today I think we all ought to welcome you home and thank you for your service. If you've turned on the television or radio in the state of Georgia, you've probably heard for eight years in a row, Georgia's the best state in the country to do business in. And my personal opinion is Georgia's the best state in the country for a veteran to live, work, and raise a family. <laughs> this one, a long line of examples to demonstrate the emphasis from the very top on our veterans and their families. I want to thank you all for being intentional with your presence today. Far too often we see people in today's world focus on everything that they're against. Today we've come together in this house to come together over something that we're for. And you know when people will tell you what's wrong with America, today we get to be in a room and observe what's right about America that we're for America, that we're for freedom, and that we're for our veterans. And I don't think today's lesson should be lost on any of us. So regardless of what political persuasion you come from, what your demographic is, we live in the greatest, freest country in the world, as our speaker pointed out earlier. And we ought to be thankful for that and the fact that we've all come together again to observe what's right about America. May God bless you all. May God bless America. Thank you all for your service. Thank you, General Cardin. You know, when I was preparing remarks, a set of remarks are usually given to me, too. And when they start to have a bio about our next speaker, you really don't need one for them. Uh, you know, Senator Harbison is one of the better human beings you're ever going to meet in the state of Georgia. He is a Marine's Marine. That is an understatement. Um, he serves on the Homeland Security Committee, and um, we recognize and appreciate his continued support of all the veterans and their families. So it is my honor to introduce um, the only Marine speaker besides me today. Uh, Devil Dog, Senator Harbison. Good morning. Thank you so very much for allowing me to be part of such a, such a great program. I must say what an honor it is really, really to be here today standing before you to offer a few small remarks. It would be remiss of me to not begin by thanking Governor Kemp 
and his office, not only for hosting this ceremony every year and inviting me, but also for his unwavering support of our veterans community. He does it uh, consistently and adequately, and I appreciate it as a veteran myself. The network of resources available to our state's veterans would not be possible without the steadfast loyalty of so many, many Georgians working together to try to serve those who have served us. So thank you, Governor Kemp, and others for being a friend of our state's veterans family. We are all appreciative of the work that you and other people in the General Assembly have done to make this possible. And this is a great place for our veterans. Thank you so very much. As I said, as you heard earlier, my name is Ed Harvison. I'm an humble servant for the 15th Senatorial District, and it is uh, home of a lot of installations, militarily speaking, and I'm proud to represent Fort Benning specifically. So thank you so very much for letting me uh, speak on their behalf today. The, uh, I must say that this ceremony holds a special place in my heart as a veteran myself. I dutifully served uh, for four years in Vietnam, giving my life to the United States Marine Corps. Oorah, by the way. Oorah or simplify. That's what we say usually. Which, whichever category area you fall in, oorah or God bless. But nothing compares to the collective years of service of everyone here in the room and the trials of hardship that they've all endured. There's some, there's some real stories that I get to witness every year on about the first Saturday in November as a member of the Georgia Military Veterans Hall of Fame, headed up by Richard uh, White and Paul Longrea. I'm just really amazed when those people are inducted and the description are read about how they were honored and why they've been inducted. It really, really blows your mind. It's just unspeakable about the things they've done. They've flown into combat under heavy fire many, many times. They, they ran into combat to save many people under heavy fire, artillery fire. It is just amazing to hear the thing, plus the service that a lot of people have dedicated their life to do. So when you get a chance, honor them, remember them, and nominate somebody for the Georgia Military Veterans Hall of Fame, not because of combat necessarily, but because they have done something to help other veterans. They have done something to serve veterans in some category. I think many of you here in the room would agree with me when I say that it is always a delight when veterans are able to get together to celebrate their achievements, reminisce of our times in service and under the lives of everyone we have served with. Today is a momentous day. Although bittersweet as we remember the veterans whose lives we have lost, I'm glad to share this space with you all, and I would not want to be anywhere else. I urge you to please take a minute to salute and salute, embrace emotionally every veteran who bravely fought for our great nation. So on behalf of the state of Georgia, the Georgia General Assembly, my Senate colleagues, the Lieutenant Governor, I would like to say thank you to the veterans that could not be here with us today and the ones who are here today. I would not be standing here if it was not for you, and I hope when I say the next few words, you will feel every emotion behind them. We are here to honor you. We respect you, and our level of gratitude reaches every pocket of this great state. You represent our nation's military community so well, and I'm honored to be able to bear the same title as you, a veteran. Thank you for your service, and God bless you for what you stand for and what you've achieved. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Senator and Semper Fi. Um, I did not thank uh, the Board of Georgia Veterans Services earlier, so thank you all for being here and all your volunteer work. Um, I also just wanted to add this. When um, the General earlier asked for all the Vietnam veterans to stand, it was a lot different than it was 10 years ago. We're losing a lot of these veterans every day shows you how important the Georgia Department of Veterans Services is, how important our leadership is, how important the VA is. These are veterans that need help, long-term care help, 
and we need to continue to support them. But, you know, we have to remember Veterans Day is not just about veterans. It's a day to recognize the sacrifices of those veterans. It's because of them we have our freedoms, our liberties, our individual responsibilities, the freedom to worship. We live in a representative democracy. There's a term for this, American exceptionalism. It's a hot word today. Some will define it one way, some will define it another. But there's always one easy indicator to try to prove this inherent definition of American exceptionalism. It's very simple. Every day, thousands of people try to break into our country. Nobody breaks out of our country unless you're on the 10th most wanted list, or maybe you're a Hollywood celebrity, but that's it. It's all of these moments that we see when we see what the sacrifices of the veteran have given us. And when I was in Iraq, this is a number of years ago after I was in the Marine Corps, to show you every step of American servicemen I was in the red zone and working for an NGO at the time. Our job was to help build a country, build a democracy, get it going, 2004, 2005. And many of you know who have served in Afghanistan and Baghdad and all over Iraq, how dangerous it is for contractors from that country to work for Americans. They live their lives in terror, literally every day trying to get to work. We had one lady who would come to work every day. She'd be escorted by Blackwater Security. She finally came to us and the embassy and said, I can't do this anymore. My family's afraid for me. They're afraid I'm not even going to make it home. So we had this discussion, our leadership with the embassy. They devised a little plan. They created a fake beauty parlor every day. She would walk through the front of that beauty parlor. She'd walk through that back door. Blackwater security was there to pick her up and take her to the embassy. Do you know what she was doing? Helping them write their constitution. This is a woman in Iraq in 2004 and 2005. But every single man and woman who have worn the uniform for our country you made that possible, every one of you. Now, I did want to close on two quick issues. One is um, really, the governor brought up a great quote by Ronald Reagan. I want to touch on a story he told his very last day in office. He shared a story about an encounter between the battleship Midway and a small boat of refugees. It was in the early 80s, and the Midway was patrolling the South China Sea. The crew saw on the horizon a small, leaky boat crammed with refugees who were starving, hungry. It was in Indochina, and all they wanted to do was get to America. The Midway sent a small launch boat out to bring them to the ship. And as the refugees were making their way through the choppy waters, they saw the midway. They saw one sailor. And one of the refugees stood up and says, hello, American sailor. Hello, freedom man. That's you. Everybody who was worn the uniform, that's you. You are walking beacons of freedom. And I think we should all be incredibly grateful to the leadership of our state for helping our veterans. And I promise this is the last time I say in closing that this is actually it. I brought my son today. I often bring him, he's 10 years old, I often bring him to veterans events, bring him down to the Capitol, not to see politics. No offense, Governor. 
Senator. But to see service, where it starts, where it begins. I brought him to the wheelchair games in Kentucky, to laying wreaths at Wreaths Across America in December. The governor has probably had more pictures with him than any other 10-year-old in the state. Um, but it's important. And I think next year, I know it's a little unusual. I'd like to see more kids here. The greatest generation who we constantly read about during World War II, that was the greatest generation. But it's our responsibility to teach the next greatest generation. That is on the shoulders of veterans and our leaders. So remember when you leave today that the next generation, they'll be great as well regardless who's in the White House. So I want to thank you all. It's an honor to be here with you, Governor and First Lady, and all of you great veterans and elected officials who have been so honored to be here today. So thank you so much, everybody. Have a great day in Semper Fidelis. I think we're inviting everybody for a picture now.